Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, Jeremy Chassin, uh, working uh, at uh, DH Hospitality for 15 years now, so it's quite a lot of time. And uh, you can, so it's um, a company that is managing bookings and planning for hotels uh, all around the world. Uh, I, have, I am an architect there and I'm applying some of the things I will show you, but this is quite re recent work and it has not been uh, fully documented yet, so you will see here. I will do everything uh, uh, mostly live, so it's cool, and uh, I think after all you've heard this morning, you want to see some code to run actually the thing, and this is what we will see. And today we will talk about um, aggregate composition. And I use the word aggregate here, but we will talk about deciders. Who know what a decider is? Okay, not many people. So the problem with the, 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 with the aggregate definition is that it's quite fuzzy. So that's one of the power of aggregate, uh, but that's also one of its weakness. Uh, an aggregate is something that keeps some consistency inside the boundary. So it's, yeah, there are something inside, there is a rest outside. And what it says is that what is inside needs to be consistent. Okay, so you need to move from one valid state to another valid state or not at all. Okay, uh, but it says nothing about how you do that and how you manage that. But something interesting with this definition is that you have a boundary. What is inside has to be consistent. And what it says is that what is outside just doesn't have to. Doesn't mean that it should be not consistent. Okay just doesn't have to. And this is something that uh, leads uh, in a lot with, uh, that brings in a lot of complexity when you start to design small aggregates, is that you have a lot of small pieces moving independently, and you usually need some things like small actors or small services for each aggregate calling the, the, um, one, one other uh, in a complicated way. And then at some point you have too much moving parts, too many parts in parallel, uh, in concurrency, uh, they, there is no problem for that, but it's a lot of infrastructure to run all these small things. And something we, that could be easier sometimes is just to take several that work together and group them together as a more manageable all. So uh, what you can do is that you can write ad hoc code that group them, but then if at some point in time it's better to split them again, risk to have some friction because some decisions have been taken in this composition, in this grouping, and then when you start to remove it, you don't know how to do. And here, uh, I will show you first uh, what the decider pattern is. This is a, um, a pattern uh, that enables you to write aggregates in a well-defined way. So this is a specific shape for aggregates uh, that has very interesting properties. So we are in an event sourcing track, so we'll talk about event sourcing, but not uh, exclusively, because you can also use the, uh, the decider pattern to run classic load state, uh, load state, safe state way. And the super cool thing with that is that you never need to touch the domain code, uh, whatever the persistence you want to, to use, okay? So let's start with the decider pattern. The decider pattern is quite uh, simple, it's here. We will, I will write it again so that you see how it, it works, okay? So it's a decider because this is, this is something that decides things, okay? So we will create. Uh, who is fluent in F-sharp? Hey, hey some, some, some people. Yeah, this is F-sharp. You will, you will see it reads mostly like Python but with more types of things and I will explain on the fly uh, what's happening. So we'll uh, create a decider type, and this decider type is generic, meaning that it can act on different things with specific types that we will find multiple times in the definition. Uh, the first thing a uh, decider will do is that it will receive comments, comments that will ask to make a change on the decider. This is the comments we talk about uh, with aggregates. It can also be seen as the method on your aggregates that will change the thing in the aggregate, but we will put this command in a type and we'll just use uh, this uh, cut C name inside the definition, okay? So these are the commands, okay? But what an aggregate uh, decider is doing also, it's, it's taking decisions and uh, the output of this decision will be events, saying this happened, okay? So we will have an event type 
and to manage all this inside, uh, it will need a state to know what is the current state and take the decision. So an S. Okay, so short end for command, event, and state. And the first thing in a decider will be the decide function. The decide function is here to say, when you ask me to do this command and I'm in this state, here is what happened. So definition is quite straightforward. This is a decide function. And this function will take a command of type C. It will also take a state of type S. And it will, it will return events, so E. And this is a list. Okay, because it can return uh, zero, one, or many events. So this is where the domain logic will take place. Okay, this is where we will say, okay, I'm in this state, you asked me to do this. Yeah, this is the result, this is what happens. Of course, you can anticipate that is, this event can finish in an, an event store, of course, okay? Second step, uh, once when we are in a state and something happens, the state change. And in the decider pattern, we clearly split the decision from the state change. And we will have for this state change an evolve function, evolve. And it says, when I'm in this state of type S and this event happened of type E, here is the new state of type S. Okay, so here I'm writing in F sharp, I'm using uh, immutable data structure. So the state is not like some things that change. You have a data structure that contains some values, and the evolve function will create a new version of this data structure with a new value and return it. Okay, so this is pure functions. It will be really easy to reason with and all that. You will see how we write it uh, just uh, after. Uh, to be able, the evolve function takes a state, but the question is where do we start? So we need an initial state. So initial state, like that. And this is just a value of type S that is the state before anything happens, okay? And uh, the last thing is that at some point we will need to, to, to finish, uh, to know that this decider has finished its job and that we can archive it or something. So, so we have a is terminal function that takes a state and return a Boolean value uh, to say, okay, it's done, right? This is a decider. And actually, you can take any aggregates and writing with this form. You, if you have access to external service, you move them up the stack and you put the values inside the commands as values, and your decide function will take everything of the state. Uh, all the reaction, instead of uh, performing side effect, you will have some events from the decide function. You can use them to perform the side effect from the outside. You remove all the rest, you keep the log logic inside, okay? Uh, this is the shape of a decider, and, and for the last part, I will need something that uh, I will explain later, but I will need to, to uh, make a dissociation between the state that is on the output, on the input, and the state on the output. So everywhere the state is on the left, I will call it SI, and everywhere it's on the right, I will call it SO. And we can just create another type for short end, which is the same, but with the same state on the input and the output. Uh, yes, like that. It's a decider of C, E, S, and S. This is a short end when the state on the input and the output is the same, okay? So uh, now that we have a decider, let's write some domain code. So we will take a very simple domain. We have a light bulb. Okay, and we have a cat, right? So the light bulb, you can fit it in the, in the, in the plug, and in the socket, and it will have a, n a specific number of usage before blowing up, right? And the cat, it just has two states. It can be awake, uh, awake or sleeping, and you can wake it up or, or get it to sleep, okay? So our first example is here. So the command, here is the type command. And uh, so this kind of type is called a union. Uh, so the command can be as three cases, which is either 
uh, fit with the fit value which uh, contains the max uses integer, or it can be uh, switch on or switch off. Okay, so the way to implement it in other languages, usually you can create a base class and having three classes de um, uh, deriving from, from this base class, and then you can match on the type and do the thing, okay? Or you can use dynamic dispatch or anything. But in our case, it's, this is a single type with three cases, okay? Uh, the event are quite the same as the others, but uh, in the past tense, right? So we have a fit and we have a fitted event. We have a switch on, switch on, switch off, switched off, but we have an other event which is blue. Uh, when uh, the, the, the bulb just blew. Uh, the status can be on, 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 on or off, and the state is also a union. It can be not fitted, working with the status and uh, remaining uses, and it can be blown, right? Okay, so. Usually, you don't start like that. You go uh, using um, um, uh, TDD to, to define what your state is, but the command on the event comes from the specification. The state is more like implementation detail. So the decide function here, as we said, must take a command on the state. So what you ask the bulb to do and in what state it is. So we just match the two values and return some event for each, right? So uh, if it's not fitted, on, uh, we send it a fit command. It will return fitted with the max uses uh, indicated. If it's, uh, we ask we to fit, but the state is not not fitted, uh, it will fail. When you ask it to switch in on uh, while it's working, and the status is off, it will uh, be switched on. Okay, but. This is only the case when the remaining uses are larger than zero, right? Because when it's zero, we go to the other line and uh, it's on and we ask it, uh, the, the current state is off, uh, it just blew. And the last one is uh, you switch it off while it's on and it will say it's switched off. In all other cases, it does nothing, right? So this is the, dec the decision for this thing, right? So this is a very simple decider. Uh, in the case of a board game that I wrote, I have a decider which is 2,000 uh, lines long of F sharp, which is quite terse language. So yeah, and it has been converted to uh, 11,000 lines of PHP. So yeah, you can imagine the the thing. Um, so uh, after the decide function, we need we need an evolve function, and this function is just changing the state based on what happens. So it takes a state on an event and we return a state. If it's not fitted and it's just fitted, no, it's working uh, with the status off and the uh, remaining uses are max uses. Uh, if it's working and it has been switched on, we change the status and uh, remove one from the remaining uses. If it's working and switch off, uh, it's off. And if it's blue, it's uh, transitioned to the blown state. In other cases, it's remain in the, in the same state, right? The initial state is not fitted, and the terminal state is state equal to blown, right? And now I can just create the structure by taking the function and put, it in, put, it, put them in the data structure, right? So uh, the cool thing is that uh, this decider is very easy to test. So I wrote here a function given when, which take a decider, right? And what it does, it takes, uh, it returns a function that takes an, uh, some events on the command, okay? Uh, it takes these events uh, and pass it to the list.fold. List.fold is taking a list, uh, initial value, which is the decider initial state, okay? And it takes the first uh, element in the list and call the function that is passed. Here it's decider.evolve. And it takes the result, takes the next, uh, the next uh, item in the list, and do the same. So after the second line, uh, we get the initial state, then the state after the first event, after the second event, and the last event, so we get the current state, right? And so this is a pipe uh, forward thing here. 
this uh, current state is passed to the decider decide function with a command. And the result is a list of events, right? So I just create a small operator which is uh, equal bang, which says assert, okay? That checks that exp uh, actual is equal to expected and print uh, something. And now I can also create this small arrow operator, simple arrow, uh, that is given when with the bulb decider. So my tests are here. When nothing happened before and I fit the bulb with um, max use uh, to five, uh, the result is one event which is fitted with max use five. When the bulb has been fitted and you switch, in, uh, switch it on, uh, it's switched on, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the tests are here and very easy to, to read. So the last one is checking that if you, oops, if you start it with uh, max use one and switch it on off and then you try to switch it on again, uh, the resulting event is blue. Okay. Cool thing here uh, with this um, with this uh, this test is that the state never appears in the state, so I can refactor the state as much as I want. I never have to change the test. This is pure uh, uh, behavior-driven test, and you have seen all the framework I'm using, like the these lines. Okay, this is my test framework to write this. Okay. Uh, so this bulb thing, I can. There will be the cat after. Uh, this thing, the first thing I can do with this, you will say, okay, you can test it, but can I run it, right? So we can run it like this. Uh, we'll create a small uh, module in memory and uh, create an instance of it with uh, in memory in memory uh, with my bulb decider. And now I can send it some commands, like for instance, uh, fit, uh, bulb.fit, and with the value uh, bulb.maxuses uh, is five, okay? And after that, we can call it with uh, another command, which is a switch on. And same, but with switch off, like that. So I take my decider. Uh, I didn't run the code before, so it's not working, of course. Up here. Perfect. And uh, so just to show you that it's working, I can run all the tests. And we should get green. Everywhere, okay. Uh, so I take my decider here, okay. I create an instance of it, uh, an instance to run it. And you see that what I get is a function that takes a command and returns an event list. So I will pass uh, some uh, events to, the, uh, to some commands to this function here. And it says, okay, the result is it was fitted uh, with a max use of five. If I try it again, I get an exception because we cannot fit it twice, right? But now I can switch it on. Okay, it's switch on. I can try to switch it on again. Nothing happens. This is what we expect. I switch it, uh, switch it off. It switched off. On, off, on, off, on, off, once again, and bloom. Okay? And now I can try anything. Nothing happens anymore. Okay? So, when you have a decider, you can just run it like that. I don't need an event store or anything. I can just run it. I will show the code just after. The cool thing with that is that I can take the code I show you, and I can, for instance, uh, we have a new service that we that we want to 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 implement. And first thing I do is I write my uh, my uh, domain code as a decider, and I use this uh, uh, in memory function to run it. I just put it behind a service and I put it into staging and people can start to play with it. There is no persistence, no event store, no database, but you can already test the domain logic from here, okay? And what is the magic for this in-memory function? It's very simple. What it does is says, give me a decider, okay? And I create a mutable variable called state, which is equal to the decider initial state, right? And then I return a function that takes a command, and it will call the decide function with the command on the state. I get some events. 
With this event, I use the evil function on the current state to fold them and get a new current state that I store in the state again and just return the list of events that I computed. Right? Yeah, this idea running in memory. The cool thing with that is that you can take any domain logic written as a decider, pass it to this function, and it will run like that. I don't need to rewrite the same blah, 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 blah run it, blah, instantiate the thing, because all deciders have the same shape. I can write this code once and use it for any domain logic. OK? So next step. No. At some point, I will, so to test that it also works with uh, something different, I can uh, test it with the cat. So, so I will not show the code for the cat because it's a even simpler decider which can be awake or, and it's just doing the thing, okay? So I take create an in-memory with the cat decider and uh, I can uh, cat.wake up. Uh, no, we see here, or uh, I can uh, get to sleep, right? So I in instantiate it. Uh, when I tried, it was already woke up uh, awake. So if I try to wake him up, uh, nothing happens. But I get it to sleep, wake up, go to sleep. I try to go to sleep again, nothing happens, and all that. Okay, it's working. And I'm just running the decider in memory. No, the thing we want to do is that we want to persist uh, the state. This way, if we stop everything and we restart, we will be in the same, uh, in the same position. Um, the thing usually is that if you start with thing in memory and then you want to implement uh, it with a database, uh, you get a bit in trouble because you will have to uh, change the code. Here, we will just do something like that. Module, uh, state, and we will create. So it's state.run. And uh, for this, I need to give a decider, a bulb decider. And what I will do is that I also will uh, give a serializer. serializer and the two last things I need to give is the container name this is a bulb and this is instance one okay like that and now I can just do the same thing as before sending command to this function and magic here uh, this is a ESKV this is a my uh, toy implementation of uh, key value store and um, event store only for educational purpose, okay? This is stated in the license. You can use it if you want for your own demonstration, right? Uh, but only if you don't make money with it or you contact me. Uh, and, this is, and never use it in production because it's not done for that. It's really uh, something to show how it works. There is a client uh, library to use ESKV, uh, which has all the primitives you find in any uh, client for uh, event store and for uh, key value stores, right? But I try to reduce it to reduce at the maximum the complexity of demos, okay? So you do the same for your own infrastructure. Uh, you, you, you try to create the same kind of client APIs that I created for ESKV and you will be able to do everything but in your production, right? But don't use uh, ESKV for production. Uh, the cool thing uh, is that uh, it's very easy to install and all that. You look at my um, and my GitHub and you will find it. Uh, so now I have an instance and I fit the bulb. And as you can see, it just appeared here in the key value store, in the container bulb, uh, key one. Uh, the value is of five. Cool. Now if I try to uh, build, do fit it again, it fails. I can switch it on, off, on, off. On, if I try on again, nothing happens. Off, on, off, on, off, on, on, on the next call, the state is blown, right? So, easy. Uh, and as you can see, I just took the same decider and run it, and I saved the state. So, uh, it will tell me, yeah, but we are here for event sourcing. It's not event sourcing, we are saving the state. But the cool thing is that we will switch to event sourcing without changing the domain code either, right? So, follow with me. 
what's happening inside the state run function. So it needs a decider on the serializer. A ser serializer is just a pair of serialized and deserialized function, right? Uh, the serialized and deserialized function take a state and return a string, or take a string and return a state. Uh, and the container is key and key is just to, to know where to store it in um, ESKV. So uh, starting ESKV is, fa is uh, really easy. You create a client, right? And then uh, what we have is these two functions. Uh, this first one is a try load. It takes a deserialized function, the default value, and the container in the key, and it will call try load with the container in the key to get the string that is contained for this key. Okay? I get a result. If the key exists, I take the value, I deserialize it. If it doesn't exist, I take the default value. Now I have a value, and I will result the value and the e tag uh, for this key. So the e tag is useful because uh, the e tag will change on each version of the document, right? And when I will uh, save the document again, I will check that the document has not changed between the moment I loaded it and the moment I save it, right? So the save is equally easy. It takes a serializer, a conta the container, the key, the state, and the tag, and it's called try save. Uh, with the key, and it serializes the state to a string. Uh, it passes the e-tag. Uh, if the state has changed, I will get null, and I can fail. Uh, if uh, the e-tag is not null, I get a new e-tag, uh, but I will not use it, so I just drop it. So um, know that I have these two very easy functions. I can use just use them. So I use the try load function to get the current state and the tag from the database. Now I can call the detail function with the command that has been provided to the function on the state I just loaded. I get some events. I use list fold with the evolve function to get the new state, right? And I just save it. Okay? I return the events. And this is working. And this is working for any decider. Right, and this version has concurrent, uh, uh, optimistic concurrency checking because of the e tag. So, if some other instance uh, is messing with the state, uh, I will detect it be between the load and the save, which should be super short anyway. Um, the other thing is that it's very easy to change this to keep state in memory. I can create also a mutable variable, load the state uh, up front, and then for each command, uh, I keep the e tag. Uh, for each command, I will compute a new state. Try to save it. If the e tag has changed, I will just reload the state from the database. And each time, I will uh, update. So I reload only if I have a conflict uh, with the current state of the database. So, and once again, I don't need to know anything about what's inside the decider. I just to know that it's a decider. It can run for all uh, your um, domain logic exactly the same way. So I just need several versions of this run uh, to implement the different uh, loading, saving, keeping in memory patterns, but the decider, I don't care. Uh, it's also uh, working for cats, of course. Let's see, uh, state.run cat.decider. I will just take the, uh, the cat uh, state serializer. Uh, and I will call it cat1, and I have my two functions, uh, my two commands here. Yeah, I wake it up, it's awake, I get it to sleep, it's asleep, if it's already asleep, nothing happened, and extra, extra, okay? So super cool, I have a cat on the light bulb that are working. Now the question is, but how do you use these deciders for event sourcing? Oh, it's actually very easy. Module, event sourcing. Uh, so let be, and I will say event sourcing dot run with uh, my bulb decider, uh, bulb event serializer, and uh, bulb one. I don't have container on the streams yet, but it will uh, come one day. Up. Up, like that. So I get it. 
oh, in my streams here, I see this bulb one stream, uh, the first event is fitted. If I try to run it again, bam, no, I cannot. I can switch it on, off, on, off. So you can see also the uh, event uh, I can switch on. If I do it again, nothing happen. On, off, on. And the last time, it just blew and nothing happened anymore, right? So once again, no, I'm using event sourcing, uh, but totally without, uh, totally without uh, uh, changing the code. So for the infrastructure for this is just, uh, I load the event with my deserializer from the stream. So there is an easy API in uh, ESKV that just returns all the event from a stream. Uh, I get the event on an expected version. This is the current version of the stream. Uh, I fold all my events using the evolve function. I get the current state. I pass this current state to the decide function with the command. I get the new events. You follow? It's okay. So I get the new events, and then I append this event to the stream, passing the expected version. If someone added new events to the stream in between, it will uh, be detected, and I can do something uh, more specific, right? So this is event sourcing now. Cool. It's also working for the cat, of course, uh, as you can guess. Uh, but no, the thing is that uh, I have this small decider, and I maybe I want to just run one thing and not two things, like not two APIs or something. An API that will have things for the cat, things for the for the bulb, and I want to put them together because. Uh, uh, in some ways, this is so small, they go together. Uh, what, what the first to, to create all this infrastructure to run both, okay? So, I have two decider. Is it possible to create a single decider? And actually, yes. And this is where it gets interesting. The thing here, uh, so I will go a bit f here, and we will create a compost function. So. This will be a bit harder to follow. This is the code, but I will not show you. We will write it. Okay. So uh, the only thing I will copy is the first line because it's a bit long to type. The first two lines. Up. Like that. So uh, I need. Uh, I want to write a compose function that will take an X decider. Okay, that takes command of type CX that will return events of, of type EX and have a state of type SX. Okay, and I have a second uh, DY decider with the CY, EY, SY. And what I want is a decider that can do both. So it can take uh, commands either from the first one, the one on the left, or for the second one, the one on the right. Right? And the decision taken from, the, for, for, uh, from this decider can either be uh, an event for the one on the left or an event from the right run one on the, the right, okay? And what is the state? The state is just a pair of both states, okay? This is just a pair, the state of the bulb and the state of the cat, okay? So this is what the signature of this function is saying. The either type is not a standard type in uh, F sharp, but I just wrote it here. So um, it's either uh, uh, with two, two type parameters, and when the left side is of type L, and the right side is of type R. So uh, returning here, the first thing we need in our decider is a decide function. Okay, and as a decide function, it will take. Uh, a command, I will say CMD for short, and it will take a state. And we know that the decider we want to provide, uh, its state is a pair of state, okay? So we will di directly call the left part SX and the right part SY, okay? So it will get one pair, and I call the left part of the pair SX and the right part of the state SY. The command can be either a command for X or a command for uh, Y. So I will test it with a match 
on the command. And if it's for the left, we will call it CX, a command for X, okay? And now we know that we have a command for the left part. So we will take the left decider and call the decide function from the left decider. So the left decider is the X. And I will call decide. This decide accepts CX as a parameter and SX as a parameter. Okay, and this will return events for the, uh, it will return events of the left uh, decider. So to be able to make it compatible with the others, I will say they are on the left. So I will just uh, use, I will just say they are on the left on all the events, okay? Like that. For, if it's the right, it will be equally easy. Uh, so if it's the right, I will call it CY. I will take the right decider DY, pass it the command with the state for the right, and just say, okay, it's an event on the right. And this is my decide function. Now what I can do is the evolve function. So the evolve function, as you remember, is taking a state. Our state is still in two parts, SX and SY, and we have an event here. So the thing is th that we need to return a new state that will be computed with the two decider we have. So we will again match, but this time the event uh, to see if it's an event for the left or the right. If it's for the left, we call it EX. And what we can call is the evolve function from the DX decider with the state for x, the event for x, and what we get is just the new state for the left part. So I will just put the same value for the right part, part like that, okay? But if it's for the right, it will be an event for y. I will use the y evolve function uh, with the state for right, for y, and the event, and I will keep the same value on the left. Okay? Ah, yes. Uh, where? Ah, yes. E, Y. Like that. Uh, whoop. Uh, the next thing is the initial state. Initial state. The initial state is easy because it will be the initial state from the DX decider on the left and the initial state of the dy decider on the right. And lastly, the isterminal function. Uh, this is a function that will take a state, so we will call sx the left part and sy the right part, and we'll just say test that sx is a terminal state on the x uh, on the left uh, decider, and that uh, sy is a terminal state on the right decider like that, and as you see, yeah, it, it works, right? So this is awesome, and now we can create an, a bulb and cat, a cat and bulb uh, decider. Let's try it. Um, module cat and uh, bulb. So let uh, C and B, it will be shorter, C and B. Uh, and to create so to create the decider, uh, I will just create it, it uh, here. Let cat and bulb equal, and I will use the decider dot uh, compose function to take the cat decider and the bulb decider. And now I get a cat and bulb decider. So the thing is that you can apply this compose function to any decider you write with your own domain logic, of course, not just with a cat and a bulb. It will work. Okay? And we can run it in memory, CNB uh, in memory. Uh, and I will need the cat and bulb uh, decider here, right? And then I can uh, give it some uh, some function. So I already wrote this to gain some time. Uh, so here, uh, I can, so uh, to, to pass 
um, uh, a command to the cat, I have to say that it's on the left, okay? Because this slider is only accepting cat command on the left and bulb command on the right. So I wake up the cat, nothing happens because it's already awake. He go to sleep, awake, go left go to sleep, and then I can feed the bulb, switch on, switch off, on, off, right? And the cool thing is that I can also run it, uh, not in memory, but uh, as uh, in um, uh, with a state. So I will just go here. Uh, this one. Yes. Uh, no, this is uh, not the one I wanted. In memory, cat on bulb. Check, 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 check. I have a lot of things. Uh, this one, state cat on bulb. Yeah. So the thing is that here I also compose a serializer together to be able to take two serializers and uh, make a single one. And then uh, I can do this. And as you can see on the left on of the pipe, on the right, you have the state of the cat and on the right, the state of the, of the bulb. So I can switch on off and go to sleep, uh, awake, switch on, switch off, on, off on, off, and it's just blown, right? So uh, I can take two aggregate, uh, two deciders and have a single decider, but what I can do now is that I can take another decider and combine it with this one, right? And the fun thing is that we can also create a neutral decider like this, which is a decider that you cannot use and that does nothing. Why? Because uh, the command is void which is a type which has no value, so you cannot create a value of it, so you cannot create a command of type void. And it has no event because it's of type void. And is that it has a single state, which is a value of unit, which has a single value, which is a parenthesis, parenthesis, right? And the decide function just says, whatever you ask me, I return nothing. Uh, when you ask me to evolve, I keep the same state. I, my initial state is the only value I have, which is parenthesis, parenthesis, and it's always terminal, right? No, I, if I take a decider and I compose it with this, I get another decider, but which can do exactly the same thing as the decider I composed with it, right? So actually, this is a neutral element for the operation, which says that the operation is monoidal. Okay, cool. Uh, just it's monoidal up to isomorphism because we have different shapes, but that does exactly the same thing. Uh, something that is interesting also is that we, we, when you have a cat, uh, you can run a cat, but if you want to run many cats, it can be cumbersome to combine them all together as a single decider. So there is a mini operator which takes a decider and will return a decider for many instances of the same thing, right? So the thing is that in this decider, uh, each of the instance will have a string identifier. Okay, you can choose a different type for uh, as string, but it was easier for the demo. Uh, and each time the command will be the name of the thing and the command. The event will be the name of the thing and the event, and the state will be a map, a dictionary of strings, and the state of this thing, right? And so. Uh, the decide function, it will receive a command which is actually an identifier and the uh, command for the inside decider and all the states. So we try to find the state in the map and if we cannot find it, we return the initial state. We have a state. We call the decide function, we get some event and we just add the ID on each event and now we can uh, decide for many things. Okay? The evolve function is quite similar. We have an ID with the event, so we try to find the state or we use the initial state and we use the evolve function to compute the new state and we replace the, replace the state for this identifier in the, in the dictionary. The initial state is an empty map and the isterminal function checks that all the values in the map are terminal for the decider and with this uh, I can run many cats. So I, wi I will run many cats. Uh, chuk, 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 it's a bit further. So many cats. Uh, I will run it with, uh, with the state. So the first cat, cat is called bullet because uh, this is the, the name of, uh, of my cat. Okay. Uh, and when I put it to sleep, you can see that the state is uh, bullet is asleep. 
and I can wake it up and wake. Yevara is another cat I know, and I can uh, wake it. And with a single decider, I can run many cats. Next interesting thing also is that I have a process. So a process is a state machine, and a process uh, will. Oh, I have four minutes left. A process will uh, evolve. So a process listens to mostly events, uh, will emit comments, and have an inner state. So we have an evolved function that is similar to the other one. Uh, the React function says when I'm in, uh, in this new state and uh, this event just occurs, is this here is the list of commands that we must send. Resume is when you just resume the process after a crash. Uh, it just returns the thing. It has an initial state, also uh, uh, is terminal. And so I have here a process that when a light is switched on, uh, it will wake up the cat, and we will know that the cat is wake, uh, awake because we will see the woke up um, uh, event. So my state is either, uh, idle. The process is just waiting for the light to switch on. Or waking up, it's sending the command, but it has not the confirmation yet that it has been done, so it will stay in this state. And when uh, we... Uh, receive the woke up event, we will go in idle state uh, again. So it looks a bit like the decider, but with different function. So we switched on uh, waking up. Uh, when it's woke up, it will go to idle state. Uh, uh, when it's waking up, then because we switched on, uh, it will return wake up, and the initial state is idle. And the cool thing with that is that we can combine this process with the decider. So how do we, uh, we do that? The thing is that we take a process on the decider, and this decider will be already the combination of uh, the cat on the bulb. Okay, and I will take this this uh, decider on my process that will wake up the cat when the light switch on. Okay, so it doesn't get the cat to sleep when it switch off, of course, because a cat should never go to sleep when you want. Um, so uh, it has a decide function. So the thing is, I get a function and I get the state for the decider on the process. And what I will do is that I will take this command, right, and pass it to this loop. So this loop will uh, accumulate events over several commands because the thing is that we have an input command but the process may trigger other commands that will produce a new state. So the first thing is that if I still have command to process, I call it command, this is uh, here the command uh, I'm highlighting, and I compute the event for this command uh, in my decider and uh, this event I will use my process to collect new commands for each event. So this is the collect fold uh, function. What it does, it says, okay, so I'm in a state, I have some events, and I have nothing to return. Uh, and when I have an event, I will evolve the process first, okay, with uh, my current state on the, uh, the list of events. I get a new state. I call react on the process that can return me one or, or multiple commands, and I put them in my result. And then I take the next event on my new state and do it again until I have no event to process. And in the end, I have the, com the, the list of all the comments uh, I need to, 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 to process after. And what I do is that once I have all these new commands, I will just put it in the list and do it again. It will go through the deciders that will produce new events that may produce new events that go to the process that could produce new commands, but eventually there will be no more commands to send because everything is in the right state, and at that time I have collected all the events uh, generated by the decider. Okay, So now I can uh, use this uh, combine uh, with decider and go uh, quickly to show you how it works. So here I will combine the, uh, yes, uh, I know, yeah, adapted process is here. So this is just a small helper to, to convert the events from the decider to the process of the rest. Mm, ah, yes, I need to run both at the same time. Yes, almost. 
uh, this is my new version of this. Of course, it will not work. Haha, <laughs> demo effect. Uh, type switch making server. Why? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, I will just run everything because here yeah, I made some change on the way. Uh, check, 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 check. Uh, uh, with process, uh, yes. And here, like that. No, okay. No, it's not working. Okay, so I explain what's happening. So uh, when when I, I do this, uh, I take my combined decider with a cat on the bulb, I take my process and I get a new decider, right? So this decider, I can run it with any of the other function I wrote before, but no. Uh, when I uh, get the cat to sleep and then I uh, switch the light on, I get both the light uh, is switched on and the cat uh, woke up, right? So I had two uh, deciders uh, that I could, I can still run independently using two different uh, run functions. Uh, I have a process that I can also run independently using a process run function. I can bridge everything with an event store and all that, but I can also, using just these few lines of code, put them together and have a single thing. Okay? But I don't uh, need to change the code either for the cat, for the bulb, or for the process to move from one setting to another. I can just glue them with standard operators and get all the thing running as a single unit, okay? So the interesting idea is that you, instead of thinking what should be the side of my uh, aggregate, you can think, I will design the small thing, I will design the process, I glue them together, and then I will think how I run this, right? Use the operator I've shown, uh, compose uh, and uh, co uh, combine with a decider and all that, and you get a single thing that is still a decider and that you can run in memory uh, with a state database or um, uh, with an event store the same way. Uh, you're free to choose and you can always choose later and you can move from one version to the other, like starting in memory, state, and then event sourcing, and that's just the same code. So. I think my time is over. So thank you very much. I <laughs> hope that you like it.